Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Now, today's video is going to be a little bit different because today's video is all about shifting your frame of reference around health, around healing, and around what you believe is there to protect you, was there to serve you, and was there to harm you. I think it's really important to understand my perspective because I've been on both sides of the fence. Um, I've been on the side where I worked as a graduate student for the FDA. I've been on the side where I worked as a clinician in the hospital. I've been on the side where I worked in a physician's group. I've worked in Japan in the hospital. I've been in healthcare. This is gonna sound crazy now that I'm saying it, but my first job I took in healthcare was like 2003. So I've been in healthcare like 20 years, okay? Now, with me saying that, I'm giving you my perspective based on that. And also this, which I, I think is really important, is that my whole goal, when I set out this journey to say, I wanna become a healthcare professional, what that meant to me was seeing my grandmother pass away on her bed, on her dying bed, and me making a promise to her and my family that one day I'm gonna be in a position to help in the case that that happened again. That was my sole purpose in becoming a healthcare provider, okay? Now I had a little bit of a romantic view of it because I grew up watching movies, like old movies like The Medicine Man or like, um, you know, different movies where they go off in the jungle and find these natural cure cures and they're able to cure cancer. So I grew up with a very romantic view of healthcare. And as you're matriculating through school and you're learning what you can learn, you're doing it at such a fast pace. There's no time for you to think about, is this something that I'm enjoying? Blah, 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 blah. You, there's no time for that. Because every week there's a test. Every time, Every day there's an assignment. There's always something for you to do. So, while I was in school, there was no time for me to take a moment and say, am I going into the direction that was my initial purpose? There was no time for that. But as soon as I graduated and having the opportunity to work at the FDA and then to work in the hospitals and then to get sick myself, I grabbed a totally different view because what happened with me was I understood there was, there's a huge difference between manipulating somebody's biochemistry and correcting somebody's biochemistry. Correcting somebody's biochemistry, that is what allows them to heal. And when I realized what we were doing in the hospitals and the clinics, it doesn't matter where it was, what we were doing was manipulating their biochemistry. That's why they, need, they needed to take the medicine month after month after month. They needed that constant manipulation of their biochemistry. Now, what's really important to understand is that just because you're manipulating it and that is manipulating the numbers, the high blood pressure. So your blood pressure looks normal. Your blood glucose, it looks normal. OK, even though it's manipulating these numbers and these numbers look correct, they look therapeutic. The truth of the matter is the damage is still occurring because it's just manipulation. And that is what made me start to think different. And that is the cause of the, today's video. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about why they don't want you to be healthy. Now, I know that could be a very controversial uh, statement, why they don't want you to be healthy. And you fill in who they is. But when you go through these points that I'm about to share with you, you can't help but use your common sense to come to that conclusion. And keep in mind, I'm using my common sense and also my personal and professional experience in healthcare for over 20 years to be able to come to this conclusion as well, too. And for years, I fought against this. Like in my mind, I'm like, no, I know good people in healthcare who really want to help people. And there are, there are many great doctors, amazing nurses, great pharmacists who truly want to help people. But when I explain to you why even they are under an illusion 
and they don't understand that this will not only lead to healing, but it will, it's also in a roundabout way making things worse because the third leading cause of all death is medical error. That means that you use the right drug on the right patient at the right time, at the right dose, and that patient still died, okay? That's the third leading cause of death. And so with that being said, a lot of us in healthcare are feeling hopeless. A lot of us in healthcare are walking away. And a lot of patients are not trusting healthcare anymore as a result of that. So I wanna share with you, you know, my perspective on this. Because I know I get this question all the time. I get I get it from not only you guys out there, but I also get it from other healthcare professionals too. Like they want to know. And when I explain to them what I have been unraveling for the last 10 years to understand, then they fully understand it. Okay. So the 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 frame of reference I'm gonna give you, because the the whole title of the video is why they don't want you to be healthy. You fill in day, okay? Because I'll be honest with you, I don't know who they is in, in, in its totality. I can't tell you who they is, okay? But I can tell you some major players, but I don't know who are, who are behind those major players, to be honest with you, okay? So here's what we'll talk about today. I want you to consider for a fact, if I wanted to be a diabolical genius for the sole purposes of making trillions, if not trillions upon trillions of dollars. I wanted to control people to be able to make those trillions of dollars. What would I do as that diabolical genius to ensure that this happens, okay? Now, I want you to think for a second, what would you do if you had no morals, no ethics, and you were willing to do whatever it takes to be able to control people and to control people for, for the sole purposes of making them fall in suit with what makes you trillions upon trillions of dollars, okay? If I were that diabolical genius, the first thing I would do, I would have to control education. I would have, you, you have to control education. Here's why it's so important to control education. If you control education, you control the programming that is being put in the minds of the generations to come, okay? Forget about the generation that is currently already indoctrinated. You control the minds of the generations to come. So whenever they come through K through 12 and even college, the beautiful thing is if I use all my programming hidden in the books, hidden in the different types of lessons that they have to go through, the different types of curriculums that they have to go through. If I put my programming into this and if I ensure that the programming makes, makes certain that nobody is a critical thinker, okay? Because when you think about how our kids take tests today, it's not critical thinking. It's not, it's, it's about A, B, C, or D, okay? There's nothing critical about that. You could even prove the theory wrong. Let's say we're in a physics class. As a child, you could literally prove the theory incorrect and it could be sound. And guess what? Because it's only A, B, C, or D, you're still incorrect. So there's no room for growth. There's no room for even correction in our current learning system. It's all about taking a test to get a certain grade. It's not about creating critical thinkers. And in my opinion, that has been very intentional because if you look at our education 50, 60 years ago, and if you look at the education in other countries, like when I go to Africa and see what these kids are learning, they're learning physics in like the seventh grade. The math that you should know in college, they know in elementary. These children know seven languages, okay? In America, the one thing that I always, I always hear from foreigners when I go out of the country is that why is it that Americans don't learn other languages? You know, and I used to, I used to think to myself like, who are you to tell me I need to learn another language? 
But then when I realized that when I went to European countries or I went to other countries, I went to Africa, I got friends who ha literally speak six to seven, nine languages and what that does to the brain. OK, when you speak in other languages. So the first thing I would do is control education. And guess what? That's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they did. Uh, Rockefeller put together a Flexner report. And that Flexner report just went around to all the colleges, all the schools. And part of what the, the whole purpose of that Flexner report was to look at medical schools in particular and determine what was an alignment with their objective and what wasn't an alignment, okay? What needed to be removed and what needed to be kept. And very little was kept. As a matter of fact, I think the report came back and said the only medical school that was up to par was John Hopkins. And if you look at the connection between Rockefeller and, John, and Johns Hopkins, you understand why. Over half of medical schools were shut down. The vast majority of black medical schools at HBCUs were shut down. Now that's a huge effect because now the vast majority of African-Americans in the early 1900s, because this is when that it happened, the vast majority of African-Americans had to go to a black doctor. They couldn't even go see a white doctor. So you shut down almost 80% of HBCU medical schools, all right? That was the first chink in the armor, okay? The controlling of our minds. And not only from a standpoint as the children came through, but from the standpoint of even we look, look at it today, healthcare professionals. Healthcare professionals, we really don't think, okay? And I know I'm going to get a lot of flack out there because there's a lot of brilliant, brilliant physicians pharmacists, nurses, there's a lot of brilliant, they're brilliant. There's a lot of people who are very, very smart. But there's a whole, there's a very difference between being smart and intelligent. So intelligent. And what I mean by that is if you're just regurgitating information that you were taught and not able to look at this patient and make a determination or discernment based specifically on this patient, that is not thinking. OK, if every time you have to upload what the symptoms are into a program, you know, to determine what medication is supposed to be given to this patient, given their medical history, given their signs and symptoms. OK, given, given their current medications. OK, if the, the only thing you're doing is just uploading information and then spitting something back to you and it's not patient specific, then that isn't thinking to me at all, okay? And the other thing is, it's not thinking with the mindset of healing, it's thinking with the mindset of treat the symptoms, not, not, not the cause, okay? So the first thing I would do as a diabolical genius is take over the entire education system because if I can program you to be how I want you to be, to think how I want you to think, to act how I want you to act, then, and I can do that for 12 years, K through 12. You could be indoctrinated with my programming for 12 years and then an additional four and then an additional four more if you want to be a, a professional. Then by the time you're done, you're going to be fully indoctrinated, which is why you know, a lot of people get degrees and they never use them. <laughs> they never use them. So that's the first thing I would do. I have to take over education so that I would have complete control of the generations to come. OK, they have to be programmed with everything that I want them to think, to do, to be and to act upon. OK, the second thing, the second thing I would have to do is. I would have to control food. Now, here's why I have to control food and water. This is why it's really important. Because you, if you really want to bring somebody to their knees, if you really want to control somebody, 
control them with something that you give them three daily doses of every day and that's three meals a day okay that's that, that's the easiest way to control somebody so i gotta control food so how am i gonna control food well the first thing i need to do is well i know this food that is natural i know that that food is what's keeping keeping them healthy in the first place okay so i gotta make the food unnatural and it's got to be as unnatural as possible but not so unnatural that it instantly takes them out okay i'm talking like 70 percent unnatural sort of like the standard american diet i want you to look that up what percentage of the standard american diet is processed food process means fake synthetic food 70 percent of the standard american diet today is processed and when you look at our urban neighborhoods that number is even higher there's kids that have never tasted real food okay i remember i brought like food to uh to a community in the school that i was mentoring and doing a doing a seminar with and i brought a lot of fruit because you guys know i own a fruit company and i had some kids taste blueberries for the first time first of all they didn't even know what a blueberry looked like and when they saw it they was like that's not what a blueberry looks like and i said well what does it look like they was like i don't know but it's like black and i was like well this is kind of black and they were like well it's like black like the black that's in pop tarts they had never had real food like <laughs> everything was processed nothing was real uh, the vast majority of their food unfortunately because they lived in food deserts there was poor access to healthy food a large majority of their food their parents were getting from like the family dollar okay the, the dollar general okay so it's hugely important to understand if i want to control people then i got to control the food and why is it important important to control the food because if I control the food, I can make them addicted to it. They'll be so busy trying to get that next high when it comes to sugar, when it comes to fat, when it comes to crunchy. They'll be so busy trying to get that next high that they won't have time for anything else. And if I take it away, then they're going to be mad. And isn't that what people do today? Like whenever I start talking about eating healthy and you got to get rid of this and get rid of that because it's killing you, people say, no, I love my food. And I say, well, what if your food is killing you? And they're like, hey, I'm willing to die about it. That is addiction. Okay, so I got to have people addicted. I got to take over food. It's got to be processed. It's got to be gen genetically modified. Okay, it's got to have all kind of chemicals in it. It's got to have a lot of sugar. I wanted a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, because people get addicted to sugar and salt. I want a lot of fat in it, too, because people like greasy, too. All right? And what's beautiful about this, the more this food that they eat, the sicker they're going to get. All right? The more this food they eat, the sicker they're going to get. But it's not going to take them out in one instance. It's going to be a gradual pull off an hour, a day, a week, a month, years of their life. Okay? And why is that important? Because that person is the perfect patient. Okay? Somebody who is not only sick right now, but who is getting sicker every day by the day. All right, which leads me to my third thing I need to control after I control the food and water. OK, I control the food and water because you guys remember in Nazi Germany, they used fluoride to control a lot of the people who were in the camps because fluoride makes makes you docile. OK, fluoride affects your cognitive abilities. OK, so I got to put that in the water. All right. And now that you sick because you drink in this water that is tainted with fluoride, chlorine, chloramine, bacteria, and the list goes on and on. And you're eating a diet that consists 70 percent of processed food, man made food. Not, the vast majority of your food is not not only is it not divine, but the vast majority of it is overcooked, too. So 
even the portion, the 30%, it's probably overcooked because 50% of the vegetables that people are eating are potatoes. And the vast majority of those potatoes are in the form of French fries and potato chips. Okay? So I got to control the food. All right? I control the food. I got you addicted. I got you getting sicker by the day. I got to control medicine. I got to control medicine. Now, I talked earlier about that flexing report that was created by the Rockefeller Foundation. What I didn't tell you was that when they rebuilt all of the medical schools, they had to follow all of the procedures and all of the standard operational procedures that they wanted them to, to follow. Otherwise, they would not get funding for the school. They would not get accreditation for the school. This is why today you don't see anything natural in medicine. Not even the food at the hospital is natural. This is why you don't see, like back in the days, you could go to the doctor and get chiropractic work. You can get Reiki work, which is energy work. You could get herbal, herbal medicine, which was the, the vast form of medicine in the early 1900s. It wasn't like drugs. The vast majority of food, of medicine that you would go see a doctor for would be something natural, okay? Now, albeit they were doing crazy things like, you know, bloodletting and mercury, but the vast majority of things that were giving out was, hey, you need to go rest, have some water, and take this herb, okay? They did away with that. They did away with that, and that was very intentional, okay? That was part of my diabolical plan to create a war on natural medicine. Now, why would I need to create a war on natural medicine? Because people have always been skeptical about anything that was unnatural. The mercury that they used, used to use, which is literally a toxin. Like if mercury spilled out and this happened one day I was at the hospital, we used to have those big thermometers that had the mercury in it. So as the temperature went up, the, you would see the mercury go up. One time the thermometer fell off the wall, hit the ground, and the mercury sped out everywhere. We had to leave the pharmacy and call the hazmat team, okay? Call the hazmat team in to clean up the mercury. And they couldn't put it in a regular trash bag. They had to dispose of it totally different, okay? This is what they were using in the 1800s and the early 1900s, okay? All right, so that was the unnatural side then. I mean, the unnatural side today, honestly, in some cases, isn't even better. It's not even better today. But I think what's important to know and understand is if, you know, I'm going to fulfill my diabolical plan to control people and to be a trillion upon a trillionaire, then I got to have a war on natural medicine because there's thousands of years of anecdotal data showing that herbal medicine works. Thousands of years. We can go back 10,000 years ago and see the dead big the, uh, the, the book uh the book of dead Stro uh dead sea strolls and back in egypt and they're providing you with all these natural cures okay we can go back even further and we'll see humans using herbal medicine to heal heal themselves we can go to china and see it we can go and see the native americans use it we can go to africa and see it there's thousands of years so for me to be able to convince people that, yeah, I know this work, but this is better. I have to unravel thousands of years of passed down through oral tradition and through, you know, cultural traditions as well too, of learning of what to heal this versus using this man-made source. So I got to start a war on that natural medicine, okay? And that means I got to go after these natural doctors. That means I have to outlaw certain things, which many of um, many of these natural modalities have been outlawed in many cases as well, too. And so now, today, prescription only, baby. Prescription only. Why? Because you got to buy my drugs. I own Big Pharma. Okay? I own Big Pharma. You got to feed Big Pharma, baby. I got to make trillions and I'm going to lobby to the government that in the case where I just so unfortunately so happen to kill people, um, I don't go to jail for it. I only have to pay a small fine. So, yeah, I made yeah, I had to pay out 
one billion, but I made seven billion on it. So I keep six and you get one, that's a fair deal. Okay, so we, we got to do it that way. Prescription only. I can't have you using natural medicine because it might heal you. If I heal you, you're not going to be a customer every month. So I got to start a war on natural medicine and I got to incentivize. I got to incentivize hospitals. I got to, because most hospitals are privately owned. I got to incentivize hospitals. I got to incentivize healthcare workers to focus in on drugs, surgery only. Okay, drug surgery and medical devices only. Okay, none of that natural stuff. Okay, that'll actually heal you and take away our patient, which is our customer. Okay, can't have any of that. I mean, just take a look at the opioid crisis. The opioid crisis is killing hundreds of thousands of people. Have they outlawed the drugs? Nope. It is a is it an absolutely necessary class of drugs? Nope. <laughs> But you think that they're going to outlaw it? No. Restrict it a little bit? Maybe. But outlaw, you see how many people are dying of fentanyl? How many people are dying of other opioids every day? Nothing's changed. They're still available. You still can get them, okay? Even though there's natural alternatives. And even though the that it never fixes the problem, doesn't matter. Okay, why it doesn't matter? Because I created a war on natural medicine. I own education. And many of these governmental agencies that are supposed to be protecting you, I'm really good friends with them as well too. So opioids are absolutely going nowhere, despite the fact that opioids are the same drugs that cops are arresting people for. And people fail to realize that. Okay, they come from the same origin, all right? And despite the fact that opi prescription opioid drugs are killing more people than actual illicit drugs, never mind that either. Okay, so I got to control medicine. I got to start a war on natural medicine because if people start learning that they could actually heal themselves, then that's going to be a real problem. Okay, what else do I have to control? If I was a diabolical genius, I would definitely have to control programming, okay? I'll have to first create programming and I'll put that programming in the form of television, okay? And I'll make sure that not only the t television shows, but the movies are indoctrinating people with my programming, fear-based programming, of course. Uh, I'll make sure that even though there's social media, I'll make sure that people can only see the ma majority of things that people see is going to be negative. I'll make sure that people don't feel like enough either. I have to make them feel like they're not enough. I always have to make them feel like they need something. They need to become more. And why is that important? Because if you feel like you have everything, then you need nothing. But I need you to buy my drugs. I need you to buy my fancy you know, cars, I need you to buy my fancy shoes. I need you to buy all of that. That would be really important to me. And if you look at the last two years, between 20, 2021 and 2022, they banned over 2,000 books. They banned over 2,000 books. We saw the censorship of people trying to use their right, to, or their right for free speech. You know, nobody cared about free speech during that time. One of the most important amendments there is, but nobody cared about that. Complete censorship. Complete censorship. Why? Because I own the media. There's only about six six companies that own pretty much 80% of all the media. And I like the fact that I get to put drug commercials in between my programming and food commercials. Okay. I get to tell you about the food that I need you addicted to, and I get to tell you about the drugs that, you know, gonna focus on the symptoms and not the cause, okay? So I gotta control television programming because I need people to think in black and white, either this or that. And the reason why I need people to think in black and white is because I need people to argue, all right? I need people to not understand that 
when somebody doesn't agree with you, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. I don't, I don't want them to think like, hey, this person just has a different perspective. I don't need them to think that. I need the, them to think that this person is absolutely incorrect and I need to argue with them. I need the people to argue with each other. I need opposition. Because when I'm doing all of this stuff, I'm taking over education, I'm taking over food, I'm creating a war on medicine, I need people to be properly distracted. And if they're arguing with each other, they won't see what I'm doing with this hand, okay? The last thing is I gotta control their bodies. I gotta control their bodies. Now, I'm gonna do that with food, okay? I'm gonna have them addicted to food. They're gonna love sugar, they're gonna love salt, they're gonna love fat. Okay, I'm going to make sure that's in everything. I'm going to make sure it's processed. So we put things like MSG in it. We put other things that make them addicted to it as well, too. That's going to control their body. All right. That's going to make them sick. Okay. I need them sick. I don't need them well. A well-oiled machine might rise up and fight me. I don't need that kind of stuff. And when I tell them that they have to do something, okay, they won't argue against it. If I tell them that, hey, this is a mandatory voluntary uh, injection program that you need to participate in or you're a horrible person. Then because I control their bodies and I control their minds, they're gonna just, they're gonna do it. And I need them to do it because I wanna control them more with what I'm injecting in them, okay? What's the number one cause of death for all human beings? Cardiovascular disease. Well, why not inject them with something that causes myocarditis that makes it even worse? I think that'll be great. I think that'll be great. They'll be on more medications. There'll be more hospitalizations. I own most of the hospitals. This is going to be really great. And this is why they don't want you to be healthy. They don't want you to be healthy because when you're healthy, it's a higher version of you. You're connected with your divine self. And the healed version of you makes very different decisions from the unhealed version of you. Okay? Number two, you can't be controlled when you're healthy. When you're healthy and in your right frame of mind and you're eating healthy foods, it's very difficult to be controlled. Okay? So I can't help you healthy for that reason as well, too. Also... You being unhealthy feeds my entire system. It feeds the education system that, as you can see, more and more 500, uh, Fortune 500 companies are saying they don't even require degrees anymore. I think half of them at this point don't even require degrees at this point. But yet and still, people are still piling into schools. You know, so I, I, I need people to feed the system. I need people to feed the healthcare system. I need people to feed the insurance system because if you're unhealthier, your insurance premium is going to be higher. Okay. All right. You're going to pay more money. Okay. One way or another. If you don't pay it on the front end and premiums, you'll pay it on the back end with medications and hospitalizations. Okay. And the other thing is the healthier version of you is ready for a revolution when it comes to fighting for not only yourself, but the generation that's coming behind us. And this is why they do not want you to be healthy. You being healthy is the most revolutionary thing that you could ever do. It not only breaks the chains of unhealthiness, of disease, of inflammation, of bondage, mentally and physically for you, but it breaks the generational curse of you passing that down to the next generation. It's the most revolutionary thing you can do to be healthy. Okay? So this is why they don't want you to be healthy. And this is why you have to make health your absolute priority. There's nothing higher than being healthy. Because when you're healthy, you can do more for everybody around you. Okay? Hugely important. All right, so I hope this has been educational. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Share this video. This is something that we need to go viral so people have the right understanding to all the questions they're asking. Why this? Why that? Why can't I get more of this? Why, why is the system like this? Share this video, okay? And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get great content like this in the future. Until the next time, peace and blessings. And God